Hey guys, welcome to Priceless Beer Movies. I'm your host, Colin Price, and I've got a joke for you. What do you get when you cross a billion dollar R-rated film that many consider to be a masterpiece, and no, I'm not talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, with a huge number of really aggressive fans who are just clamoring for a sequel? Well... Joker, fully adieu. Joker, fully adieu, once again stars Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck returning from Joker 2019. It's the sequel to that film. It goes without saying. And uh, in this one, Arthur is locked up in Arkham State Penitentiary for, you know, all the crazy crap that he did at the end of the first movie. And he's awaiting trial. His lawyer is going to try to get him off with this, like, split personality defense. She's convinced that Joker is actually this other persona, and it's not really Arthur. It's this thing that he dips into. Basically, they're trying to do primal fear with Arthur Fleck. While this is going on, Arthur has also become infatuated with another inmate at Arkham, played by Lady Gaga, who's kind of this movie's variation on Harley Quinn. And so the good deal of the first half of this movie is about their relationship and how they become attracted to each other and start connecting to each other. They've both lived similar lives and they're both you know, dealing with a lot of trauma, but they meet in this music therapy class. And so they start learning how to communicate with each other through song. And yes, guys, as has been widely reported, this is a musical. We'll get to some details on that later on. But as this budding romance continues to blossom, Arthur's still got his court date to worry about. And it's not too long before he actually ends up in court having to defend his acts that night. His lawyer's not doing that great a job, and this other inmate, Lady Gaga, is kind of pissy about it. Because, you know, the whole point is that Arthur is supposed to get out of Arkham, and then she's supposed to hook up with him, and they're supposed to have this beautiful, crazy, nutso, Looney Tunes, life of violence, whatever they've got going on. Hey, I mean, I've seen more toxic couples. <coughs> That's about as much of the plot as I really want to get into, because this movie has a lot of surprises in store, and it's making a lot of people really, really mad. You know, I actually was not planning to do a review for this movie because I've reviewed the first one. I've just recently reviewed a bunch of new releases, and this page is primarily for older films that I think deserve more attention. So doing a whole string of reviews for new movies, I mean, I like doing them. But at the same time, it sh I don't really want it to be the focus of this page. But then when this movie caused such a stir, I'm like, okay, I have to see this. I have to figure out what is making people so angry about this movie. And I have my thoughts. As I tend to do, let's start off with the good. The performances across the board are wonderful. I don't think there is an acting misstep in this entire film from anybody. That was one thing that struck me right away when I was watching this movie is everyone is clearly dedicated to giving their all toward their performances. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of Lady Gaga with her music, I will say that her acting ability does frequently just pleasantly surprise me. She is a phenomenal actress. I don't really care much for a lot of her music. I don't. I'm sorry. I know I might take some hate for that. But I am frequently surprised by how good she is in front of the camera. Even supporting characters like Brendan Gleeson as one of the guards at Arkham. Just everyone in this film really holds their own. Also, this is a beautiful film to look at. The cinematography is wonderful. You know, a lot of times when the movie comes out that's a musical, of course you go to it for the music primarily. But have you ever noticed that even musicals that aren't fantastic usually look wonderful? There's a lot of effort that goes into the production design and the overall look of the film. There are several shots and several sequences in this movie, whether they take place at Arkham or at the courthouse or in one of the handful of 
kind of dreamlike uh, musical hallucination sequences that take place throughout the film. The movie always looks stunning. You can really tell that director Todd Phillips is a master behind the camera. Unfortunately, he's not always a master when it comes to putting pen to paper in. We're about to get into that next. Getting into the mix, Todd Phillips is a terrific director. I do think that he could have done a couple more drafts on the screenplay. There's a lot in this film that's very muddled. I almost have the feeling that when he was crafting the story, he knew what songs he wanted to use, and he broke the cardinal rule of music in film, which is that he tried to, whenever he could, make the story suit the song instead of having the song suit the story. How best to explain this? He will use songs, because this is a jukebox musical, this is not new music. He will use songs to accentuate a point in the plot. Something will happen. There'll be a character reveal, a plot twist, something. We'll get that. We'll acknowledge that. And then there will be a musical sequence just kind of as an exclamation point to what we already know. And it does seem like he was sitting down at a desk somewhere writing this script and going, I want to use these songs. How can I write the movie around that? When really you should be writing the movie and then figuring out afterward what songs fit best. Tarantino can do it. Todd Phillips can't. Which brings me to the musical sequences themselves, and once again, this is a mixed bag. Some of them are kind of dreary and ho-hum, and some of them are absolutely spectacular. There were three in particular that I really enjoyed. Uh, Lady Gaga does a rendition, a brief rendition of That's Entertainment. That was really good. Um, the song Close to You plays a pivotal role about halfway through the movie. And then uh, my absolute favorite standout sequence of the film was when Joaquin Phoenix has a uh, a bit of a moment in the courtroom. That's all I'll say about it. But he does this awesome rendition of the Joker from uh, The War of the Grease Paint back in 1964. That was by far my favorite sequence in the film. Getting into the cons? Okay, here's where we're going to muddy the waters a bit. There is a fantastic sequence in the courtroom where uh, Lee Gill returns as Gary, as the uh, guy who Joker spared at the end of the first film, where he confronts Arthur in court. That scene is wonderful. That and the scene that I just mentioned where Joaquin Phoenix does his little musical number in the courtroom, those are great. Almost everything else that happens in that courtroom is really uninteresting. In fact, a lot of what happens... And Arkham, whenever it doesn't involve Lady Gaga, is really uninteresting. This film has a major identity crisis, almost akin to the one that Arthur's going through in the movie. Is it a drama? Is it a crime thriller? Is it a commentary on toxic relationships? Is it a Broadway musical? Can it be that it just should try to be a straight thriller? Well... This movie is really a grab bag. It's a grab bag of individual scenes that work really well. And because of that, I am prepared to give it a positive review. However, it doesn't seem nearly as polished as the first one, nor do I personally feel an emotional connection to this one like I felt with the first one. When I saw Joker in 2019, that movie really blew my mind with what it was prepared to do with this character. And now we get into this movie, and I don't know, it almost just seems more like an epilogue to that first story than it seems like it needed to be its own thing. Ultimately, a lot of what happens with Arthur is kind of par for the course. Like, by the end of the movie, he's not really... He's basically more or less the same guy he was at the beginning of it, and even with the Harley Quinn character, with Lady Gaga, uh, there's some reveals and some twists with her character, but 
the way the film wraps up, it's almost kind of like, okay, well, did you need that? Did you need these twists with her? Because I almost feel like the direction the story was heading would have been the same no matter what. And now we're going to get to the elephant in the room, what everyone is talking about. The ending of Choker Folia Dia. I have ethics. I can't stand when critics go into spoilers and spoiler reviews within the first few days of a movie being out. Seriously, guys, there's people who can't afford to go to the theater but still want to see a movie. There's people who maybe they want to see a couple of movies in a month but they can't. Social media, YouTube critics, guys, I know it's not going away, but I just personally consider it highly unethical to give away spoilers for a film within the first few days that it's out. So let's talk about that ending. So you get Arthur in that prison cell where... <laughs> And let's face it, that ending has people really torn up. You know, I didn't have a problem with it. I had a problem with certain things in the film that I've already made mention. I didn't really have a problem with the ending because, you know, I've seen Gotham. <laughs> this actually isn't a new idea with Joker or that character. But also, in a way, the ending of this movie answered some of the questions that I had left over from the first movie. Primarily the age difference between Joaquin Phoenix's character and Bruce Wayne, who's like, what, 11 or 12, if that, in the film? And then just also certain mannerisms that Joaquin Phoenix, as this character, is displayed throughout the film. You know, if there is one thing that I have against that first movie, it's that by the end of it, I was thinking, this guy has a really long way to go before he I would consider him to be the Joker. And I do really appreciate that this film has the ending it has because it, at least to me, wraps up a lot of those questions, <laughs> even if it does it in a pretty abrupt way. I will give it that toward the people who aren't really happy about it. Overall, I liked this Joker. I didn't like it nearly as much as the first one, but I don't think it deserves all the hate that it's getting. Um, this is going to be one of those things. You know, every so often there's a movie that comes out and I love it, and then someone tells me they hate it, and I just don't understand why. And I'm so tempted to be like, oh, well, you just didn't get it, or well, you just don't understand, or you just don't. I'm not going to say that about this movie, because I do think that the way it wraps up is pretty obvious. And... To me, I think it's really more a matter of your personal taste. Is this something you're going to enjoy or not? I enjoyed it. I'm happy to be one of the few who has, I guess. That's my review of Joker Folio Dio. Stay tuned. i got a lot more coming. Thanks for watching Priceless B Movies.